Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Coach Fury here and we are back today with episode 11 of our Michigan Let's Play series in the CBGM. And well, it is conference time. For those of you who have been following some of the other episodes on the channel, we've been keeping an eye on the Big Ten as we go through the various rounds. And Michigan are now in the tournament, um, seeded as the top seed, and we do have a game coming up. So for those of you who are watching this, may eagle-eyed among you may have seen that... Um, a certain badge is in the um, opening title here, the Wisconsin badge. That is who we are um, playing in our, our round matchup in the Big Ten and who we've got to face. And well, it's going to be a really tough game for us. And there's, there's some positives and some negatives that we're going to have to consider. Um, and I guess probably first thing to say is that um, by the point you are watching this video, and um, we will have played this game. So we're going to talk a little bit about strategy here, a little bit about how we're going to line up against Wisconsin um, and then we'll probably do another recap the, the day after that and and, and um, just see how we've got on. If we've got through we'll do a bit of a review of the, the next game, if we haven't got through we'll do a bit of a recap of the score itself. But it's certainly going to be a tough game, this Wisconsin game. As you can see here the next opponent win chance is, is 65 for Wisconsin, maybe 35 for us despite us being the, the top seed coming into the Big Ten tournament. And well the reason for that is that we actually split the games with Wisconsin during the season. We managed to win um, an early game at home, 87-65, probably before the, the Wisconsin team had kind of got settled in into a strategy. Um, same as for us, we didn't really get settled into a strategy at this point. So that, that one's kind of irrelevant. And it's probably because the most recent game we played against them, which was on the road, we lost by eight. And Wisconsin basically put up a very very good defensive showing against us um we we were pretty terrible round in, in comparison defensively our turnovers were terrible and it was just it was just an ugly game of basketball so for me i feel this is going to be a very ugly game of basketball again to be honest with you um and it's going to be a tough one and if we have a look at the scouting report for this one if i go into the uh, emails um, you can see here that it is it's just a tough matchup um to be perfectly honest with you they are a better team on, on paper statistically. They are not not as good offensively, but better defensively than we are. And they are a little bit more efficient when it comes to um, some of their, their numbers, really. Um, it, it's going to be tough, if I have to say that. Um, when we look at the actual player-by-player -player comparisons, you can see here that it's pretty evenly split. Um, looking at this, we've got O'Brien against the Okona. Pretty even matchup there. Um, both are not really natural guards as such, so they're both kind of playing out of position. We've then got Page against Beak. Um, clearly, Beak is, is 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 probably the better prospect. Same with also against Price. You see there, just on paper, they just look like slightly better prospects. I mean, both of these guys will probably be going into the draft. Um, Beak is a senior, and also has obviously declared. And then we obviously have Belairs against Taylor. Now, this is the one which is going to be fascinating because. Wisconsin, we go to their roster. In the last game, Jasper Taylor is actually out. He has got severe back pain and he is out for the rest of the tournament and probably won't make the, the national tournament either with Wisconsin. So that gives us a massive advantage here. A huge advantage. And we need to hope that um that probably Belairs will will be able to take advantage of that, whoever they, they put in his place, which I think to be honest with you, when I'm looking at this, is going to more than likely be um, be Dearborn, who's, who's not particularly a bad player. He's probably very similar to Belez in, in terms of ability. So it's probably split across the board. But the fact they haven't got Taylor, this 100 scoring, 100 inside, 100 rebounding, elite player, who pretty much drives their offense, is, is just a real, real advantage for us. And it's something we'll, we'll have to definitely capitalize on. And then obviously in terms of centre position, they do have Marsh who's playing out of position. who He's been playing pretty well, but I mean, I'm, I'd be surprised if he can if he can keep up with um, Sweetwine, who's who's just been phenomenal um, in the back end of, of this season. So that's kind of how it looks. Um, in terms of strategy, you can see here we get a bit of an overview of how they look. I mean, pretty much they play a bit of Princeton with not much offensive freedom. So primarily just Princeton offense and then on defense they pretty much play man-to-man -man in full court or in, in, in half court sets. So what does that mean for us in terms of our strategy? Well first of all if we look at the defensive side 
our defensive strategy I'm, I'm not going to necessarily reveal on this just because of the national tournament but in terms of how we we set up we we've been pretty good against them um both times i mean we held them today percent shooting here despite the loss it was more a case of our offense not really getting the ball done um in, in this one and giving away too many fast break points and too many points in the paint but that's probably going to be limited a bit more because taylor is, is certainly out injured um and you know they're going to be relying on, on dearborn to come in who who's not not quite as impactful the other question we've got is albert mitchell just had a phenomenal game in the last um in the last game log i believe um on my last recap he put up 24 points off the bench so he's going to be one that we'll need to keep an eye out for maybe strategize a little bit against him so that he's not playing against our bench and playing a little bit more against our starting personnel and then on the offensive side, I'm not going to change anything because, again, I know we were pretty terrible in this game. But, I mean, most of the season we've we've been okay on offense. I mean, we're not a very good offensive team in, in general. But um, I, I'm, I'm kind of going to stick to my guns with this one and think I think we can utilize our current strategy, which is a bit of motion, a bit of Princeton, um, and a bit of zones hack to, to kind of eliminate some of the possibility that they're man-to-man -man defense. Um, and we can utilize some of those those matchups I think and then the final point it kind of comes down to well in terms of the depth chart are we going to make any changes here well I mean difficult to say I mean I like to not typically I like to move guys around the depth chart based on mi mismatches but the mismatches are kind of in our favor at the moment it's kind of down to Wisconsin to probably change their rotation to against us if I'm honest um, I mean, we talked about Iacona is balanced. Beak is going to get an advantage matchup. Alls is going to get an advantage matchup. I'd expect Belairs to at least be competitive against um, their their backup power forward. And Sweetwine, I I have confidence that he will he will win his matchup as well. Granted, he is a little bit undersized, I believe, against his matchup, which is something to possibly I know he isn't he's 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 he's, he's the similar size, so I'd expect him to win that matchup, um, and and kind of take Marsh out of the game. And then our bench is, is pretty much more you know, more efficient than what they have. Um, we, we have a bit more of a bench impact. So it's a bit of a weird one when I'm looking in terms of strategy. I know we like to make a lot of tweaks when we get to this stage. But for this one, I'm kind of probably going to just roll the dice and see what happens. Um, I, if Taylor was in, I may have considered possibly putting Orsler on Taylor, um, given that um, he is our best defender and just to definitely try and eliminate that and maybe move Belairs into the small forward position but because he's not there because their main threat is not there I, I, it's very difficult um, to try and work out who who is going to pick up that, that offensive threat for them um, is it going to be Marsh is it going to be like Page and um, maybe it's going to be um, Mitchell coming in off the bench which is what happened in the last round I honestly honestly don't know so it's very very difficult to predict it and when it's very difficult to predict, it makes it very hard to strategize against it. So I think we're going to pretty much stand pat and see what happens. Live or die by that. Um, I think that's, that's going to be the method for this one. Um, the rotation is pretty tight already. We are playing quite top five, top six heavy. Um, we just basically have guys coming out for breathers. Maybe there's consideration of running Belez a little bit hotter than he is at the moment. Um, Something to consider there. Maybe we give him an extra couple of minutes. Um, same with with Orsler, maybe. But I mean, in terms of Beak, Iacona, they're pretty much are running hot anyway because we don't have much else there in terms of capability alongside them. So that's how we're going to run up against this one. I think pretty much keep it as is. See what happens, um, and and get and go from there. Obviously, if we get knocked out here, we then will probably be in in the national tournament anyway, given that we are a high seeding. And we'll come back and, and recap them but you know interested this is obviously as i said it's going to be post um post the actual game result so we'll know the result off the back of this but you know, interested to get your thoughts obviously you'll see this and then you'll probably see the result um is there anything we probably should have adjusted could we have changed any of the strategies um up maybe we should have gone i mean uh, maybe we should go more zone or more man defense um, I haven't mixed that up because I don't think they're particularly good at either and I think we need to keep it quite balanced against this Wisconsin side. But always interested to hear your opinions and thoughts. Um, and we'll, we'll come back next time with a little bit of a recap of the game um, and maybe a forward playing in the next game, who knows. Um, but yeah, I think we'll stand pat. We'll, we'll see how, how this Michigan team performs. 
in in this first um, first tournament game, do we get bumped out early? Um, obviously, on paper, it's not in our favour, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Can can Beak um, and and um, Sweetwine, Orsla and, and Co get the job done for us um, on a neutral venue? We're one on one against Wisconsin. Who knows? But it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to see. I think it's going to be a complete bloodbath in terms of horrible offensive game. Um, it's going to be about which team can actually get anything going on offense rather than which team can stop the other because on paper we've both been able to stop each other in the season and um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Can we knock out one of the um, the Big Ten Premier teams in Wisconsin early on or will they make a statement game here and, and knock out the one seed Michigan Wolverines? We'll come back next time and see how it's gone. <laughs>